All right, Innsbruck 2024, better late than never. I'm Maury. Women's Boulder semifinals, problem number one. When I used to root set for youth competitions way back, uh, we would keep an eye out for the weakest and newest and shortest competitors in the field. And we made it our goal, like an explicit goal from our head root setter written on the whiteboard was get them off the ground. It was the least we could do for these little kids and their fragile little developing climber egos, but also for their parents who like had paid for the comp fees and, and were filming everything on a giant iPad above their heads and for the kids' coaches and stuff. It was just make them feel some level of success or at least not them, you know, have to live with crippling failure of not getting off the mats on a boulder or a route or something. Now, uh, Imori is not a weak climber or a new climber, but she is a short climber. And often she is the shortest climber in whatever field she's competing in. And that might be a reason to make route setting adjustments. Were she not also a lead climbing world champion? And were she not, in my opinion, the only climber on the circuit who consistently looks like she can match, if not beat Yanya Garmbret, the best climber in the world? World Cup route setters are not trying to sell Imori a day pass. They're not trying to make climbing like a fun after work activity that helps keep you fit. They're not worried about accessibility by adding a couple extra footholds so everybody can feel included. They're trying to give people like Imori the opportunity to prove themselves against in 2024 unfortunately one of the best climbers of all time that's what it's going to take is you gotta you gotta look better than people like yanni garmbret so given her capability and given her goal and given what she's up against i'm absolutely not going to be looking for favors from the root setters to make things a little bit easier and i'm not going to ask for uh, for excuses when she fails if she wants to be great, then she's going to have to put in a lot of work and it might be painful work and it might mean getting back into the gym and doing those box jumps. But if I can excuse your failure using your shortness, then I can also excuse your success by using things like your lightness and your bonkers strength to weight ratio that makes you look like you're, you know, Velcroed up to a lead wall when you're up there. Imori may have shortness to overcome in life, but she's also got an awful lot of blessings. Now, all of that said, Imori fans, light me up, please, in the comments. All of that said, I felt like garbage watching her attempts on semifinal number one. And I think the crowd in Innsbruck felt the same way. And... It must have sucked being a judge on that boulder for those five minutes. Holy. And I don't think the root setters enjoyed it either. And on top of that, I can't... That boulder didn't separate. I can't find, you know, that move. It didn't make it more fun to watch for anybody. It didn't make it easier for the judges. And it didn't do anything to separate. And I think if I had been one of the root setters there... I would have been thinking back to those youth comps and thinking about that idea of just get them off the ground. And I would have been wishing I could have walked up there with my drill and moved that start hold down an inch or two. And I don't know how to reconcile those two feelings. But anyway, that's what I thought. Let's move on to something else. Let's talk about some success. Jennifer Buckley from Slovenia. Um flashbacks to Oriane Berton and her first Boulder World Cup where she also finished second place in her very uh her very debut event May Myringen 2001 right and so I'm really excited about this climber um she seems fun to watch but I do have to look at these scores and, and we should talk about the scoring in qualifiers semifinals and finals that gives me a little bit of like pause a little bit of hesitation and not get too excited first of all qualifiers were looking pretty chill and so it wasn't that easy to actually differentiate between who's great and who's not just from those relatively easy boulders for the top end climbers and then of course when we get to semifinals for the women that was a one boulder semifinal 
instead of having like eight scoring opportunities, you had like two or three if you were lucky. Like at best, this was a one and a half boulder semifinal. And that means we're trying to tell the difference between Yanya and Jennifer in this case and Orien and Oceana, whoever you want to add to that list. We're trying to differentiate between those on like a single boulder, which for all athletes is like an extremely small sample size and not at all reliable. So the fact that she gets, that Jennifer gets to finals isn't convincing enough. And of course, in finals itself, what do you make of a climber that scores right about the same level as Annie Sanders, right? So who is Annie Sanders and what do we think of her as a boulder? Um, frequent, if not guaranteed finalist. So anyway, the information that I'm seeing is, is she did really well in a round where it was easy to do really well. And then in the semifinals, she managed to squeak through on a single boulder, but that's the only factor for analysis. And then in the finals, she also did okay, but against that particular field is not particularly convincing. Do not try and convince me she's good because she beat Fanny Gibert. Don't do that to me in the comments. Um, so I guess what I'm saying about Jennifer Buckley is she looked really fun to watch. I'm excited to see how things play out for her in the future, but the results give me a reason to pause. That said, she's pretty tall, so winning should be easy, right? The other thing I wanted to talk about in this video before I go away for a little bit was podium sweeps. We got another podium sweep in bouldering on the men's side. Uh, it was, of course, uh, let me find it. It was Sota Amagasa with his first gold medal ever, standing on top, Maichi Narasaki with another silver, and Serato and Raku uh, with bronze. Podium sweeps for a country are... Uh, pretty infrequent and in bouldering they are exceedingly rare in fact in the history of bouldering world cups there have only been four instances where a country swept the podium interestingly all of them have happened on the men's side the first one it took about uh 12 12 ish years before we got our first podium sweep can you guess the country before i say <clears throat> before i say it it is well it was at munich 2011 and it was Team Russia, in fact. It was Dmitry Sharafudinov, Rustam Gelmanov, and Alexei Rupsov, young Alexei Rupsov at the time. And then we didn't see any more sweeps until post-COVID. And all of a sudden, this is the emergence of Team Japan just gunning it. Uh, 2021, you see Yoshiyuki, Tomoa, and Kokoro sweep the podium in Innsbruck. <coughs> 2022, same three. In this case, Kokoro on top, Tomoa second, and Yoshiyuki in third. That was 2022 in Seoul. And now Japan again for the third time in bouldering. And again, only four sweeps in total. One was from Russia, three were from Japan. This time though, Japan, the podium is all new. It's Sota, it is Meishi, and it's Serato. And so there's been a complete flip on who those athletes are. You now have six Japanese athletes that have been a part of these podium sweeps. And podium sweeps, what do they really like tell you? It's not so much about any particular athlete and it's really not about anything like dominance. It is much more an indicator of depth of a national team. And it kind of goes to show how impressive this Japanese team has been over I mean, in this case, it's technically just four years, but the development of the Japanese team, I mean, beating a dead horse, everybody knows how deep that team is, but they're getting the rewards for it. And I thought this was a fun stat. Four podium sweeps in bouldering history, three of them from Japan and all of those in the last four years. All right, how about a graph watch? Graph watch, let's do a graph watch. Let's look at three graphs today. First one I'm gonna start with is, of course, uh, the men's lead, because Jakob Schubert took another win. This guy just doesn't stop, and he's hit 25 goals. A reminder on these graphs, we're talking about uh, not just World Cup goals, but also World Championship goals. So if you hear a number quoted on the IFSC stream, usually they're not including World Championships. I think that's pretty dumb. World Championships, if anything, are worth more than World Cups, so I put them both together. Jakob Schubert, of course, on top with the most World Cup and World Championship golds in the history of men's lead climbing. Next is Yanya Garmbret uh, looking at the women's boulder. And of course, Yanya is behind by a few medals before she manages to be number one. With uh, this win, she now has 20 boulder golds, still a medal behind Akio Noguchi, who she spent a few years competing against before uh, the pandemic, and four gold medals behind Anna Stor, the Austrian 
boulder god from uh from the 2000s who earned her last gold medal in toronto 2015 where i was very lucky to be uh to be in the uh, crowd for and lastly of course is the female lead gold medals now this is probably my favorite field to look at because we've really got a fight on our hands it was only last year in chamonix where jane kim one of the greats managed to secure the women's gold medal record from angie eider who won that back in like two i think it was 2012 the world championships she finally hit 20 uh, 29 medals Fast forward to like 11 years later, Jane Kim manages to top that 29 medal mark with 30. And only a year later, Jane uh, Yanya Garnbrett has now matched Jane Kim's record of 30. So who's going to be the first to 31? Well, Yanni Garnbrett is taking a break from World Cups to prepare for Paris. And of course, Jane Kim did not qualify for Paris. So... If Jane Kim does compete in Chamonix or any of the other lead World Cups this season, it's possible she could hold Yanya off, if only for, you know, a couple more months. But it looks like Yanya Garnbrett has an extremely good chance of taking this record of the most female lead medals of all time sometime in 2024. And like always, we end with a check-in on the World Cup rankings to see where everything stands for this season. We've still got a bunch more comps to go, but this is to see where everybody currently stands in the race for winning the World Cup of 2024. Let's start with the women on the bowler side. In first place, Yanni Garnbrett holds tight, and in second is Mao Nakamura moved up to the silver spot. In third place, a tie between Oceana McKenzie and now Oriane Berton from France. In fifth, Annie Sanders. Sixth, Nali Mignon, followed by Jessica Pills and Natalia Grossman, tied for seventh. In ninth place, Anon Matsufuji of Japan. And in tenth, a two-way tie again, Camilla Maroni of Italy and Jennifer Buckley of Slovenia. For the men's boulder, Serato and Raku is holding on to first place. In second, Maichi Narasaki trades spots with his brother Tomoa, who is now in third. In fourth, Toby Roberts. Fifth, Sota Amagasa. In sixth, Jakob Schubert. In seventh, American Colin Duffy, eighth Gianluca Posh, and then ninth is Yuji Fujiwaki, followed by Ritsu Kayotani in tenth. On the lead side, Yanni Garnbrett still in first place, followed by Chayun So in second. Jilu Lo of China has dropped to third, where she is currently in a tie with Ai Mori. Fifth, Yutong Zhang, sixth, Laura Ragora, seventh, Natsuki Tani, and eighth, Mia Krampel of Slovenia. The top 10 is rounded out in a two-way tie for ninth by Austrian teammates Matea Pozzi and Jessica Pills. And finally, in men's lead, the top three remains the same. From Wu Zhang in first place, Toby Roberts. Second place, Taisei Homa. And third place, Serato and Raku. In fourth, we got a two-way tie between Shuta Tanaka and Jakob Schubert. And then in sixth, Zento Murashida of Japan. Seventh, Sasha Lehman. In eighth place is Alexander Megos from Germany. And a two-way tie for ninth between Tomoe Narasaki and Colin Duffy for the end of the top 10 with 765 points. And that's it for this week. I really appreciate you guys watching, even though it's a little bit later than normal. As always, you can leave your thoughts about I'm Mori, Fanny Gibert, Jennifer Buckley, Jakob Schubert. Leave them all down in the comments and I'll at the very least leave a heart, even if I hate your opinion. Uh, yeah, leave comments, likes, uh, subscribe, of course. You can also join the Plastic Weekly Discord if you're looking for some friends to watch World Cups with. We'd love to have you in the conversation. And lastly, if you really want to support, you can always drop a couple of dollars on the Patreon. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys after Chamonix.